All right, this is an introduction to Microsoft Word 2016. This is what we use here on this campus. You might have a different version of Word, 2013, 2010, 2007, 07, and they're all very similar, um, almost identical in the few things that we are going to do here. These are huge programs and we're only going to touch the tip of the iceberg. I'm going to run through these commands and it might be a review for most people um, because um, everyone's probably used Word to some extent, but I want to make sure that you're understanding the difference and how to do these um, quickly and easily. So let's get started. So opening a blank document. Well, you can open a blank document, at least here at Clark, by looking down on the um, toolbar for the W and that's how Word will open. And when you click that, it'll um, open a, a new window and ask if you want a blank document. I, ha I already have this document open. You can also go to the Start menu down here on the corner, and you can see Word is one of my most used programs, so it's sitting there. But uh, if you don't have it there, you might look under Microsoft Office. These are all alphabetized, so I look under Microsoft Office, and Word will be in there, and there it is. So somehow find Microsoft Word, and then when you say um, open, it'll look like this. It'll ask you if you want a blank document or um, take a tour. You might want to do that. There's some interesting things you'll learn. And then there's some templates here. We don't use templates in our class, but you might want to investigate some of these. So then you can say new. Now, I already have a document, so I'm going to close that one. I already have this one. So when I close a document, you can see that this one has not been saved. If I choose the X button, it will ask me, uh-oh, you haven't saved it. Do you want to save it? I can say save, and then it'll open up the um, save as do dialog box where I can give it a name, and the name will change from document one to whatever I name it. Um, I can also go to the file menu so I should say most of these commands I'm going to talk about, you're going to find on this home ribbon or on the file ribbon. Those are the two most um, used ribbons from a beginner standpoint. Um, I should also say that I have my toolbar, my ruler turned on here. Um, it's my personal habit and that's the way I like it, but you don't always see that. So when you open Word, it might look like this without the ruler. And so you can see that um, I go to the View tab and I click that and then the ruler turns on. I like the ruler bar because I like to see where my margins are. I like to see where my uh, some other information, these are tab stops and first line indent and some things like that. So it's just my habit to have the ruler on. You don't have to. So uh, closing a document. So let me go to talk about the difference between save and save as. This document has never been saved. So when I hit save, it will bring up the save as dialog box. And the save as dialog box has a couple of different things. You have to tell it where to save it, and then you'll give it a name. So um, Windows 10 is a little bit different and a, a little bit trickier. If you have a flash drive, you can um, save it to that flash drive. I'll plug a flash drive in here. Let me plug one in so that we can see that. You can also save it, at least for our keyboarding class, you can save it to the desktop or you can save it to the um, where it automatically saves it for you. It'll go to a, a certain documents folder because in the keyboarding class, once you save it, you're going to upload it inside into the keyboarding program. So it's going to be in the keyboarding program. It's only going to be saved on the computer temporarily. But if you're in another class or, or um, working on a school computer, you want to make sure that you save it somewhere where you have it, you have access to it again. And so that means on a flash drive or on a OneDrive account or a Google Drive account, wherever you save it. You might have a Dropbox account. So for the most part, we tell beginning students, bring a flash drive with you, um, and then you can learn to save 
um, everything to your flash drive. So I'm going to browse. And when I do, it says, do you see it tries to put it into the documents folder? And that's fine for the keyboarding class, but if it's a different class, I want to save it to my flash drive. So here's a flash drive. And in fact, I have nothing, it's a blank flash drive, flash drive so there's nothing in it. So I'm going to call this um, intro to Word. And you can see it saves it as a um, DOCX, and that's just a Word document, okay. And I hit save. So now this has saved, uh, it's been saved, and I know it's been saved because the name is changed up here. Now I have a file extension showing .docx. You might not see that, it's okay, doesn't matter. All right, so we've opened the blank document, we've closed a document and saved it by using the X. I can also go up here and hit close, and if I hadn't saved it, it would open the Save As dialog box. Now once I've saved it once, I don't have to hit save as, and in fact, I don't want to hit save as because I want it to be saved. Um, I want everything I do, the, the things I add to it, for example, this is a test. I want that to be added to this document, intro to Word. So I can do, I can hit save. I can hit this little icon up here on the left and you can see it tells me my keyboard shortcut is control S. So I would hold down the control key and tap the S button. And now that has been added to my, to my document. This is a test. Um, and now I'm going to delete it. So I'm using the backspace key. And now I'm going to undo this for a minute. Undo. So I, uh, that's one of the other things I want to talk about is um, undo and redo. These are the little buttons up here. This is called the Quick Access Toolbar. And the default for the Quick Access Toolbar here on campus is save, undo, redo. The print one isn't there, but you can add it. This, I'm in my office, so this is my office computer. And you turn them on and off just by clicking on them. So it selects them and it unselects them. Print preview. I can add all of these tools if I want just by clicking. And then if I want to get rid of them, I click that and they disappear. And the check mark is no longer there. All right. Um, now let's talk about uh, save and um, backspace and, and uh, delete. So most people know to go to the right of the, te the text that you want to delete and hit the backspace key and it will backspace to the left. But you can also delete to the right and that's using your delete key. So if you look on your keyboard, you have a key called delete. And if you delete, it deletes in the, to the right. Backspace to the left and delete to the right. All right. I'm going to use my strike through text here to say I've talked about that, I've talked about that, I've talked about that, so that I know, um, whoops, strike through, that's underlined. All right, so selecting text. If I double click on this word click, it selects just the word and I can bold it, I can underline it, I can italicize it, I can do something else. I can un underline it, I can make it highlighted, okay? So I double click on it and you can see even though it's selected, let me undo this, even though it's selected the blank space after it, it does not do anything to that blank space. The blank space is not really um, bolded or italicized. So let's undo this. So we have to be careful when we click and drag. So let me underline this, that makes it better. So you can see that even though that blank space after is highlighted, the underline does not connect to it. But if I click and drag, now I'm gonna undo that. And if I click and drag and I grab that blank space, it underlines that blank space too, and I don't want it to. So although clicking and dragging is um, handy for more than one word, 
If it's just one word you're doing, just double click on it and then do something with it. So when I triple clicked in here, it selected the whole line. We have the ability to triple click in Word, so you sometimes have to be careful because you're click happy. Click, click, click. All right. Um, let's look at let's look at show hide. So I said when you click and drag, it's it's um, sometimes you get the wrong thing. Well, if you want to see what's happening behind this show hide button shows the non-printing characters. So if I want to click and drag, I can click and drag. I just have to make sure that I don't grab that little blank little dot. So I want to click and not get the dot and then underline it. So there, it works. Or if I click and drag, I want to make sure I don't drag the paragraph marker. I can do that. Um, I'll bold it. And then um, I can turn off my show hide. I like the show hide because it shows you those non-printing characters. You can see how many times have I hit enter, um, how many times have I hit the space bar. Every time you hit the space bar, you get a little dot. Um, you can use the tab key. Every time you hit the tab key, you get the little arrow. So the, the show hide is, is handy and shows you those non-printing characters. But for me, it can be a, get a bit visually messy. So I don't have it on all the time, but I use it as a tool quite often. All right, so we've talked about this. We've talked about this. Bold, underline, italicize, those buttons right there. Um, and font size and font options. So most of the time, um, you'll use the default font, which for Microsoft is anymore is Calibri 11 point. I have my office set at Times New Roman 12 point, and you'll do that in the keyboarding class for tests. But other than that, just leave it at the default, which is Calibri 11. Now you can see it changed the word style, but it did not change font or the word size or the word and because my cursor was only blinking on style. So if I select the whole text, I can change it to Calibri 11 point. It's my habit to use the up and down on these increase and decrease font. I tend to use those anymore. Um, it's just handier, I think. And I always forget to use my little toolbar that pops up here, but you surely can do that. Now, I use Times New Roman quite often, but if I wanted to do, um, if it wasn't showing up in my recently used fonts up here, I could just type T-I-M and it pops up there and hit the enter key. So there's Times New Roman 12 point. Up and down. All right, so that's our font style and sizes. Play around with those. There's so many to choose from, wow. I won't get into that. We've looked at undo and redo. Autocorrect. So this is kind of a handy feature, autocorrect. Um, let me just go down here and type the word, um, I wanna type the word that. And so I typed it right, but if I type T-A-H-T -T and hit the space bar, you can see it automatically corrected it for me. There's the, but if I type this and hit the space bar, it will um, give the autocorrect that for me. There's autocorrect and autocomplete, I should say, autocomplete. And autocomplete you'll use when you start using dates. So today is April, if I hit the space bar, there's fifth, and it says press enter to insert, and that's the date. So it completed it for me. That's autocomplete. Now I have a red squiggly underline here, but the word the is spelled correctly. So what's that about? So this is a trick question. The red squiggly underline does not mean the word's wrong. It means there's something it wants you to look at. Um, oftentimes it just means it's not in the dictionary. Now the word the is in the dictionary here, but you don't need the word the twice. The, the is not um, grammatically correct. So it's giving me 
uh, the, a warning that I have an extra word the. In the English language, we can use that, that together. Um, it, I won't go into it, but the two that's can be next to each other, but the two the's cannot, can, pardon me, cannot. So I'm going to highlight it and hit delete and then backspace up to it. All right, autocorrect, autocomplete, um, a spell check. So you can spell check as you're going along and if you spell a word wrong or a word that's not in the dictionary, um, let me spell, um, let's say, oh no, that spelled right, Geneva. Let me spell the word Geneva wrong. Now, it is spelled wrong, but perhaps uh, that is how I spell my name. And I want it left that spelling. So I can do a couple of things. When I right click on top of it, it gives me, oh, did you mean this? Did you mean this? Did you mean that? And I didn't mean any of those, so I can ignore it or I can add it to the dictionary. If that's my name, I can add it to the dictionary. Now, we can't do that and our dictionaries here on campus because whatever we do to the computers, it, it gets flushed and doesn't get remembered. We have a program on here that allows all changes to be thrown away at the end of the night so that um, we don't have any problems. It keeps our computers cleaner. So we can't add it to the dictionary, but I'll, this time I'll say ignore. So remember the red squiggly underline does not necessarily mean it's wrong. It just means look at this. It's not in the dictionary. What do you want me to do with it? So I'm going to highlight these and delete them. We can also go to spell check on the review tab we have spelling and grammar. And remember, we can also put it spelling and grammar in our quick access toolbar up here. So we can go to the review tab, use it there, find it up here, or just do it as we go along. All right, I'm going to cross that out. And now zoom, zoom is down here. I can make this bigger if I want to see the document. You can see I'm starting to not be able to see my margins, but that's okay. Maybe I don't need to see my margins. So I can make it bigger and smaller. Okay. Um, and then print and print preview. I'll make this 100%. All right. Print and print preview are found on the file menu. And again, I can turn them on here, print preview and print. And when I hit print preview, it actually takes me to what's called the backstage view and it opens up the file menu and it opens to print. And so here it is, I have one page. This is the printer that my computer wants to look at. Um, usually you just leave it whatever printer it is, it's, it's um, mapped to the right printer. If I had 10 pages, I could print one page one or one through five or one comma three and it would pay, print only page one and page three and also our printing down in the lab are our double-sided printers. So if this is a two-page document, it will print on both sides. So really, that's it's that easy. You hit, hit print. And it may take a minute for it to print, so don't if you don't um, get it right away, just ask the lab tech or um, wait a second. But at home, you should just be able to hit print, and it will go to your, your printer, whatever that is. All right, so that's the basics of Word. And you know, we, we haven't touched any of these other t tools. So you can see that there's a lot more to this. But I, this is a good way to get started. And so don't be afraid to get in there. I'm hitting the Enter key. I don't want a bullet on here. Let me get rid of some of this. And I will go back here. And then I can type this, oh, I don't want strike text, so I'll turn that off. And I'll put my cursor back. This is a test of the emergency broad system. Um, it's hard for me to type. It's hard for me to type and talk at the same time. At the, and you see it picks the word talk for me, same time. So get in there, play with it. Um, allow the computer to wrap the text where it needs to. Don't hit enter. 
hitting enter is only at the end of the paragraph. So just keep typing and allow, allow the text to flow from one line, one line to the next without, without you hitting the enter key. This isn't a typewriter, right? We don't have to tell it to um, go to the next line. It will automatically um, wrap the text for you. When you get to the end of a line, and you want a new paragraph, then you hit the enter key. Enter key. Enter, enter. Just typing and okay. So you see. Have some fun.